So, hi, my name is Richard Tuttle. I am a solution architect at Serum Science. This is my compadre, Mike. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yep, Mike Katolka, technical lead at Serum Science. Uh, we both work at Serum Science, and we'll, this is our IoT session. So first we're gonna do an introduction to the robots that we've created um, into the devices. There are different devices. Mike is kind of new to Internet of Things. I don't know how many of you are new, or how many of you are experienced? How many are new? How many are experienced? Okay. Good so you're, you're, you're gonna have a better presentation. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, Mike, take it away with a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Actually, so these are our robots. We have a little introduction. Um, so on the left of the presentation there is what I called Astrobot. It's uh, actually a, a free swag that I got from Dreamforce. It's a little plastic robot that dances. I connected a motor to it, so you'll hopefully see it dance. And basically, if you tweet um, the hashtag and at CRM Science, you're gonna get the robot to dance, so you can get involved. Um, we were gonna do the same thing with Trailbot, which Richard He's very has here, but he didn't wanna work today, so. <laughs> That's what happens. You're doing proof of concept work, sometimes it just doesn't work. So um, we'll still show you some other things. So I just wanted to put that up there. We're gonna have, uh, you'll see the hashtag and whatnot on different slides so that you can actually get them to work. So feel free to tweet, he'll start dancing and it will interrupt us as we try to talk. All right, so. Uh, there's my hashtag, or my uh, Twitter handle, at Mike Katolka, so you can follow me. Um, all right, so let's get into introduction. So what is IoT? It's the Internet of Things, I'm sure you've heard of it. Basically, it, it's objects that can connect to each other and the Internet. Um, they typically connect through a Wi-Fi connection or cellular, so a lot like a phone. Um, the device itself is usually registered with some kind of cloud service. So the company you buy them from usually has like a portal that you can log into and say, this is mine. Um, and they have some, some, usually some easy ways to connect uh, the device to the internet. Uh, one example is a home security system. So I have an all wireless security system at my house. Uh, it uses cellular connection from the control panel to communicate with the fire department and local police department. Um, so I basically just, I hooked it up, I put in like a little serial code um, on the internet and that gave it some service. So the great thing is when power goes out, it's got a battery backup, it doesn't need a phone line, it can communicate wirelessly. Okay, so a little bit about the little bits. Uh, Cloud Bit Starter Kit. So I, I did electronics in high school and it's been at least a decade. So I wanted to get hands on again. And uh, Alex Sutherland, who's an MVP, he actually lent me this Cloud Bit Starter Kit. Um, the great thing is it's, they're, they're magnet, uh, magnetic little connector bits. So you don't have to get into soldering and, and wiring and that type of thing. You can do a lot with those. Um, make use of your swag like I did here and basically uh, I have this robot dancing when something happens in Salesforce or Twitter. Um, that's the end result of my playing around with this. So how did I get there? Uh, basically started really, really simple with some basics. So I just wanted to connect on the left hand side power, connect to a button which turns a light on. So basic light switch. Uh, took it a little further and instead of a button I used a sound trigger. So if you clap, if you yell and scream, um, you can get the light to turn on and also the, the motor to turn the robot. Down the right hand side are tons of little connectors that you can put together and, and there's millions of combinations. There's a whole community of these things. I believe it's, it's even open source so you can make your own. So this company is really great. Um, and they've partnered with IFTTT, which we're gonna see a little bit later. Um, so that was more or less the, the thing side. It's not connected to the internet, so 
to make the connection to the web, we introduced this thing called CloudBit, which is in the middle. Um, it's a Wi-Fi enabled mini computer. It boots off of an SD card, which is underneath of it. I didn't know any of this, so I basically just plugged it in and followed the wizard. Um, that's how easy it is. Uh, you just connect it up. Um, you're going to see a little bit uh, what the control panel looks like for this. And just a reminder that the robot is nothing special. It's a wind-up toy, and I connected a motor to the back. So it's kind of special. A little special, but yeah, it was. It's former swag. So. It's not very technical. This is a great way to reuse swag, guys. Just go home and take all your swag and turn it into Internet of Things devices. <laughs> Okay, so three things to get this working. Um, Little Bits provides this cloud control website. So um, I just logged in there, username, password. I set up my account, um, connected to this, uh, this actual cloud bit here. I then went to ifttt.com, which they kind of help you create my account there as well. So now I have two, two accounts going. I just connected them through IFTTT, and then third, you just set up automations. You can have hundreds and hundreds of automations. That's just one example I found on there. You can feed your cat every day at 10 a.m. with a little motor connected to a little cup that can pour the food into a bowl, I guess. Um, so let's see here. We're going to do a little demo of how, the, uh, how we got these to actually work together. So we go to Little Bits website here. Yeah, uh, trouble of course, the internet's not working right away. Sorry about that. Let's try this again. Slow, but working. Works better for you than it did for me, though. That's good. All right. Did mine turn off? Mm-hmm. Going to go to hmm. sorry about this here. Cloud control, let's try this. Okay, sorry for the detour. So, this is really, really basic. This is proof of concept. I'm hoping that internet's working for laptop and the robot. So, there we go. I'm logged in through Dreamforce's internet, but the device is actually connected through my phone's hotspot, so just proving it's totally disconnected. It's got a USB battery here. Um, so this is called uh, output. Uh, if you wanted to actually receive data, I'm going to press the button here, and it's going to move the gauge. So the button goes before the cloud bit. The cloud bit can then receive signal so it knows that something's happening before it. These can get a whole lot more fancy sensors and, and that type of thing. Um, for automation, they basically just forward you to IFTTT. And this is a really cool website. So there's, they have these things called recipes. These are just your automation jobs. Um, if you wanted to create a recipe, it's really, really easy. If this, then that. That's what it stands for. So the this, that's the, that's the, the trigger. There are tons and tons and tons of things here. There's everything from your refrigerator to your car, um, Gmail, Google, Google Calendar, Facebook, lots and lots of options here so you can connect all sorts of things and get really crazy. So let's go back to my recipes here. Um, so one thing that I did was Okay, so if the cloud bit turns on, I'm going to insert a record in Salesforce. 
This is actually a managed package that I installed in a demo org. Um, so IFTTT creates a managed package, you install it, and gives you custom objects, ways to trigger things. So um, just proving, uh, just showing you that there. And then the other way around, if something then happens in Salesforce, you can get the cloud bit to, to work. So this is um, bi-directional. Um, I prepared a video because I just don't trust the internet <laughs> right now. So this is just a little demo that I did. There's no leads here. Um, I'm just refreshing the screen. Press the button. And a lead should go into Salesforce. So that direction is the managed package. The trigger that I used was lead convert. So upon lead conversion, there's a, a small process builder that just does a simple insert of a record to this IFTTT account. So I think we actually just got a, a tweet, so good job. Uh, <laughs> so lead was converted, and we're gonna just show you that the robot will dance, which is based off a trigger in Salesforce. And this could take uh, 30 seconds, it could take 10, it could take 10 minutes. So I recorded a video that's under a minute, just so that uh, we're not standing here waiting for the lead. So this one's faster, great. <laughs> so this one will dance, which is based on lead conversion. This one's dancing based on Twitter, uh, Twitter mentions. So there we go. I think it was actually faster in live today, it seems like. Yeah, it's actually running faster than at home, so. Um, great, so that's that video. Let's get the presentation back up here. Let's get this up, so, okay. And I'll switch over to Richard. Okay. Need a hand? Yeah, I think I got it. Okay. So, hi, I am Richard Tuttle, I'm with CRM Science, like I mentioned earlier. So, I had the task of working on the more advanced one. Um, Unfortunately, this is my bad robot. He is not a good boy. I'm going to um, give him some trouble later, but he is connected up to the cloud, and I could show you guys that later if you guys want. Anybody can come up to me and I'll show you. Um, you can see he does, he has a microcontroller on his back. He has a photon built into him, and when you turn him on, he flashes green as soon as the photon actually turns on. Okay, he's being bad again. <laughs> I fixed him on the Muni, but apparently he is not happy with it. So as a backup, just in case, which I'm glad I did, I brought with me an Electron. So what are the devices? So uh, Particle I.O. makes three different devices. They make the, part, the Photon P0, the Photon P1, and the Electron. The differences between them are primarily that the Photon P0 and Photon P1 are Wi-Fi. The P1 has a built-in Wi-Fi antenna and a little bit more GPIO and memory. And then the Electron is a cellular device that runs on 2G or 3G, depending on which version you buy. I'm running the 3G America, because the 2G is apparently going to be deprecated pretty soon. Specifications for anybody who's an Uber nerd. I'll let you guys take a photo real quick. I see one guy doing it. I also put this in the resources, and we'll put it out in the, the chatter feed later on so you guys can get to it. Ooh, too fast. Do you have tap set on, on your laptop? Tap works. Oh. That yeah, no, I didn't want that. That's what I meant. <laughs> okay, so setting up the electron. So the electron in this case would be the thing, right? So the initial process to do it is you connect the battery and antenna, then you register the device, and then you assemble the pieces. Um, I'm using the example that came with it. So the example device is an LED with a photoresistor. So there's an LED on one side and a photoresistor on the other. And I will show you how to read both, or use both rather. So there's two different ways to connect with Particle. There is the concept of connecting individually to your own account, or you can also create a product. So a product would be like if you were to sell a device to a customer and you wanted to um, basically put them out there and, and group them together, and then you have other options of the way you, you deal with it is uh, two-legged OAuth, for example, versus the other side where you have regular OAuth, but you can only do an access token for the account. So depends on what you're trying to do with it. If you're trying to build it for yourself or for your company, that's your internal devices, then probably just individually. If you're trying to sell a device, for what I gather is the product side, but I haven't messed with it too much because I'm not selling any products. 
Okay, so you have two options for development as well. There's the particle dev IDE, and then there's the particle cloud IDE. The particle dev IDE, uh, the only advantage I can really see to it so far is that it has a serial connector, so you can actually do serial printing if you have it connected via USB. So you can have a console that prints out directly. Um, it still compiles via the cloud. So whenever you do something in the, the Atom editor, it submits it to the cloud and still flashes it back. So I tend to just use the cloud IDE. So connecting all the pieces together. So I created a method called get variable in a static class called particle, and I'll share that with you guys later because I didn't put the whole thing in there because I have an access token in there that I do not want to share with you guys. I like all of you. You guys are all my Dreamforce buddies, but I do not want you guys taking over my account. <laughs> So you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm setting the endpoint and I'm putting in the device ID and the variable. So this is the reading the photoresistor, for example, would be get variable. So if, I, if you put a sensor on there, you want to read a variable, you expose it through the, the code in uh, particle. Okay, so this is the call method. So this will call a function in your particle class. So it's same exact concept, code looks very similar, the difference being that I'm passing in an argument at the bottom on line 32, and also it's method instead of variable. Basically the exact same structure though, with the main difference being that I'm doing a post versus a get, and then I'm passing in arguments specifically. Okay. Invocable LED. Who's familiar with invocables? Anybody? Okay. Who's familiar with Process Builder? Ooh, a little low turnout. Who's familiar with Workflow? <laughs> Triggers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Process Builder. Salesforce? Process Builder is kind of my new, my new fun thing. I, I used to, as a hardcore nerd, I used to not love it as much, but now I've kind of grown to love it with Invocables. So what I've done here is I've taken this LED that's attached to this device up here, and I've actually made an Invocable method. So you have the option of toggling it, and then there's a request type that'll let you specify whether it should be on or off, and then what the device ID is. Okay, so for those that are familiar with Process Builder, you'll recognize this. These are just the conditions. So what I did is I did the same thing Mike did, uh, lead converted. I had the intentions of making my robot do something with it like he did, but bad robot. So when the lead is converted, we will, the heck? we will pass the, to the invocable method an LED on command, and we'll pass it the device ID. And as a slide I meant to remove. And now I'm going to demo it. If I configure Mike's computer out. <laughs> no. There you go. And then probably. Switch to uh, duplicates. Mm, I see. Okay. Yeah. Don't like your keyboard. We've really got to get you on Mac, Mike. Hopefully I have some leads that aren't converted that I wasn't messing with. Okay, so right now the LED is in an off state. So what we should see, as soon as I convert one, the LED should be turned on. That's not mine. <laughs> that would be really weird. That would be very strange wired across. Okay. So 
So his is about a, it's a combination of declarative and code using process builder as a replacement to a trigger. That's how I think of process builder sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think that's a pretty good description. I used to like writing triggers and then I realized I could do more fun things like this if I didn't have to write triggers all the time. Let's so trigger, Process right? Builder became my new best friend. So <laughs> now you can see we converted the lead and the LED turned on. And Excellent. Mike was afraid of wires kind of, you know, making everybody go suspicious. So you can see there are no wires at all. This is directly connected. And for one more demo, I will show you guys. So I don't have this wired up to anything yet, but you could use this in a trigger or anywhere you want in code. So we'll do two things. I'll show you what the method looks like. And I'll turn the LED off at the same time. Okay, so this is what it looks like in code. You just call particle.call, device ID, LED is the particular function I want to call, but you, whatever function you have, like if you had robot dance or something like that, and then whatever parameters you need to send to it. Uh, I'm sending it off, so it should turn off the LED. And then, I'm going to change this to light, which is going to get the photoresistor. I had a temperature sensor as well, but it kept telling me it was 32 degrees. So I think it might be busted. Okay. We lost our timer. Uh, we still have about 12 minutes. We can hit the. Uh, Little square top right. Mm. <coughs> All right. So down in the log, we can see here. This is the response I get back from Particle. So in the log, they send me back a JSON response. You can also do a format raw. Um, I did have some trouble getting that one to work though. Whenever I pass it format raw, which is actually in their documentation, uh, it would actually pro pass back a variable false. So you know, your mileage may vary on that one. So the result is 150. So you can see the light turned off, and it's telling me that the amount of light in here is 150. So if I were to change this, run it again, hopefully this is enough. <laughs> Now you can see it's 33. So I've reduced the light. So. Okay, so let's go back. How do I go back to your presentation? Click on that and that. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Just click right here in the black space. You should be okay. Okay. Right. I think that's the end, isn't it? Okay, so we've included some resources for you guys. Uh, we're going to do a detailed blog on it and do a little bit more information, and I will get that robot to dance if anybody's interested in that. <laughs> Provide some information on MIP as well. That's been a, a fun part of my project. Um, we had an intention of having a dance-off, so we're going to have our two robots dance-off and have you guys tweet, but since mine's being bad, let's go with that. So are there any questions? We have a little bit of time for Q&A. And I can... Is there a... Uh... Yep. Is there a microphone? The question of the electronics. Mm -hmm. um, you have to provide testing, testing. Card. Good question. No, they, they give you a SIM card, and if you buy a kit, it comes with three months free. Um, but after that, it's two ninety nine a month for the first megabyte, and then a megabyte, each additional megabyte above that is ninety nine cents. So with the electron, that's one thing to bring up is that you have to be very particular about what you're sending because it is a cloud enabled device. You want to be very minimal with the chatter. So. That is important. Anything else? Yep. So for, for mine, um, the dev org is what I used on IFTTT free account. Um, I found a way to, uh, they basically, when you try to connect Salesforce is the this, if this, you click that, it's like, hey, you need to install this package. So I installed that in my dev org. It's really, really fast. It was basically a custom object and some triggers. Um, go back to if this and that. 
and you can continue. Yeah, so for um, if this and that, if you're starting with the, the what he's doing there, they have a built-in integration already. Yep. For the electron photon side, what I, which I was working with, basically what we're doing is we're creating a REST, uh, we're using a REST endpoint. So we're creating an integration. So. And the REST endpoint is particles cloud? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah, and so I will pro I'll provide my code, you guys can build on it if you want, so. I'll put it out there on GitHub. Uh, go to the back there. Yes. Yep, go ahead. Hi. Um, thank you. I'm sorry if you already uh, covered this. So how robust is it? Um, I'm looking at it for an industrial application, uh, maybe for monitoring our manufacturing facility and uploading quality data up to the, our, our, our sales force cloud. So, um, you know, I, my background's in industrial ethernet, uh, and that stuff is built like a tank, and even there, noise is a problem in an industrial. How would this, have, have you guys tried anything with that? I have three devices, so no. <laughs> um, I'm not running an industry at home, fortunately. Not yet, anyways. Um, it, it is designed that way. That's the way that I get the, the feel from Particle. Um, it's connecting it to Salesforce. I think, you, I think it'd be fine there. You might want to look into some other options. Um, Thought come thunder. talk to me. Come talk to me after afterward, and I'll connect you with the evangelist here, and I think it help you out really well. Okay. One thing Thanks. to note too: Thunder uh, Thunder IoT Cloud is that it's it's for yeah. a lot of that. So That's I think it I'm can handle of. billions and billions, maybe trillions of mm -hmm. records. Um, so since it's such a transactional thing, you know, you could have thousands of these devices. Uh, sending data thousands of times a day it can get a little out of hand. So that, thing is, that cloud is the future of and the particle you want all that in your org. The particle cloud is built similarly. So I think what, what he's saying is with Thunder, which I would love to get my hands on, mm -hmm. um, Thunder's built to do that kind of transactional data. The way we're doing it, you would run into some limits if you have mass amounts of data pushing through there. Mm -hmm. So you, you would, um, you'd run into your Apex execution. Uh, API call limits. Out, and call out limits. Yep. So you'd, yep. you'd hit that at a certain point. On the electron or on the if this and that with little bits. The the little bits is is definitely slower. It's a it's a free service, so they have a huge queue of things happening across the country world. So they have you know it's it's like they'll check every minute if things are kind of quiet in the world, but they'll check up to 15 minutes if it's very busy. So once you start paying, you can guarantee a certain uh, a certain interval, and then if you do it really custom, you can actually program uh, his device to immediately log into Salesforce and put the data in there. Or yeah, some of I haven't seen stuff. that kind of latency with, with this one. It's pretty quick. So. Yes, uh, Thunder, Thunder IT is a great example. We can't get our hands on it. I'm pretty sure you'd have to end up uh, you know, paying for an account or kind of to, to mess around with. It's really uh, still pretty early, but um, Definitely for, for pay, we'll, we'll get you better. Um, if I get my hands on Thunder, system. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> yeah, it's, everybody will know. <laughs> I'll connect all the things. Any other questions? No? No questions? We are okay. good to go. Thanks, right. everyone. Thank Welcome you. to Dreamforce. <laughs>